All right, so Lloyd, uh, I'm a big fan, and uh, I've featured your content on my channel before. I, I recommended Poultry Geist in my underrated horror movies review. Um, just a quick explanation as to who you are, just for my audience members that might not have watched that video or might not know. Uh, tell us about yourself. Well, um, I am uh, Mel Brooks, uh, and um, I've uh, made uh, many uh, very funny movies. And uh, when I'm not Mel Brooks, uh, then I like to be Lloyd Kaufman, uh, pr uh, president of Troma Entertainment and creator of the Toxic Avenger, of course. And here with me is Toxie's good friend, Dolphin Man. Well, for 42 years, for 42 years, Dolphin Man has been uh, swimming in the polluted Tromaville waters, supporting Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD, Toxie, Tromi the Nuclear Squirrel, Michael Hers, and many other of the denizens of Tromaville. Which film of yours are you most proud of? Well, I think the most uh, uh, interesting film right now is Return to Return to Newcomb High, which is the second half, Adam, of our event film, Return to Newcomb High, uh, which came out uh, last year and was premiered at the Museum of Modern Art in, uh, in New York City. So I Return to Newcomb High and the angry video game nerd, don't want to be a spoiler, but he has a cameo in Return to Return to Newcomb High coming out. It'll be finished right around uh, Labor Day. Uh, Dolphin Man, you will be coming out, though, I think, yes. out of the closet. Unfortunately. But, uh, you should have told us long ago, you know, it should, the truth uh, it was always the best. So you've seen some of my videos, and, and my channel is one that relies heavily on fair use. Um, how familiar w are you with fair use, and have you incorporated that into your films beyond the parody restaurants and poultry guys? We will never rest while big business tramples over the rich history and culture of the Native Americans while simultaneously slaughtering countless innocent chickens. I can't remember if you actually showed a Starbucks logo or if it was just a cup that looked similar. But is there is there any instances where you've incorporated something like fair use in your films? That, that's a very good question. Um, I have written an entire book called Sell Your Own Damn Movie, in which I promote file sharing, in which I promote the uh, fair usage of logos and Mickey Mouse and everything else. It is an outrage that uh, Mickey Mouse is still private. The public should own Mickey Mouse. If Shakespeare were making uh, Romeo and Juliet today, he would be sued because the copyright laws have been expanded to perpetual, almost perpetual ownership of intellectual properties. It's a disgrace. Jefferson only meant for copyright to last 14 years, to benefit the artist for 14 years. Then the public who uh, supported the artist should, should, should get it in the public domain. Disney's made billions of dollars off the public domain and is preventing uh, their 50-year um, and 70-year-old uh, properties from becoming public domain. It's a disgrace. We have a video up called uh, A Sensible Solution to Hashtag Oscars So White. And uh, in that, uh, in that uh, video, Toxie and Kabuki Man and I and Trometz explain the various issues of how the evil devil-worshipping international conglomerates have stolen public domain and put it in their pockets to benefit from what should rightfully be the public's. And I commend you for your wonderful channel for speaking out on behalf of, uh, of fair usage. And also recently the, um, the uh, nostalgic critic the Nostalgic Critic has been uh, 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 with me to uh, fight against these, uh, uh, these big corporations that stop uh, people on the internet from using fair usage in their videos and uh, material. It's a disgrace. Very, very well said. And uh, yes, I am familiar with uh, copyright being expanded over the years now to what, 75 years after the artist's death? And once they hit the end of that, they're going to expand it again. They don't want to lose any of those intellectual property rights. They're just going to keep changing the laws so that they never really have to give up their properties. And yes, also, great point. Disney, very well known for taking uh, folklore and uh, public domain stories and then turning them into their own properties. So, very well said. Were Shakespeare here today, they wouldn't permit him to uh, 
he, you know, he plagiarized Romeo and Juliet from an Italian uh, play. And uh, we would not have, where Shakespeare living today, we would not have the uh, Prokofiev uh, uh, ballet or Tchaikovsky ballet or the, uh, the Kaufman uh, movie, Tromeo and Juliet. Well, that might have been a good thing, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, what brings you to RTX specifically, and do you play any video games? Um, well, I, it's hard for me to find people to uh, play video games, uh, so I usually just have to play with myself. But actually, Dolphin Man is the one who brought me here to RTX, and uh, we swam up the, uh, the, uh, the river here in Austin, and uh, this is a great, great convention. And uh, uh, what is amazing is there are many enlightened people here who really understand why uh, f sharing art is, is not a crime. If I give away all our movies on Troma Movies, go to Troma Movies on YouTube, they're all free. Uh, you, you subscribe and you get the alerts every day. My movie making videos are there, make your own damn movie videos, political statements. The uh, uh, Oscar's So White uh, piece that Troma did is there. White face. It works for me. And it'll work for you. Uh, I think that uh, there's no reason why art shouldn't be enjoyed. What I do object to is when the uh, Chinese uh, steal our stuff and sell it. In China, there are billions of people who are watching Toxic Avenger, Tromeo and Juliet, Poultry Guys, and all the Troma movies. They are elite people there who are making lots of money off independent art and, and independent uh, commerce. And uh, it's not going into the peasants' party uh, po uh, pockets. It's not go the money's not going into the rice paddies. It's going into the pockets of a very small elitist class of billionaires, as uh, Bernie says. And the Chinese should, should be, we should stop having anything to do with them. They are liars, they're bootleggers. They will never live up to their trade commitments. They're stealing real estate in the South Seas. They're going to go after um, Vietnam. It's only a matter of time. There's 6,000 years of them subjugating the Tibetans and the Vietnamese. They are horrible. And I know because I majored in Chinese studies at Yale. I have the historical background. And I had hoped when I graduated from Yale University that the Chinese, for whom Mao was a hero to my socialist grandmother, uh, I had hoped that they would come around and eventually evolve the way Obama has evolved to support gay rights, evolved. Uh, I had hoped that they would evolve into some sort of slightly fair, democratic, uh, free trade co uh, uh, country. But they are horrible, horrible government. And they're arresting booksellers. I, uh, Ai Weiwei is constantly being harassed. And uh, it's a disgrace. And America should be speaking out more about this. And hopefully uh, Bernie will uh, make sure that Hillary, who by the way is totally supported by Disney and the other fascists, um, and uh, if she gets in, you can be sure that copyright law will go on for infinity, and uh, the what is the the heritage of this great country will be stuffed back into the pockets of Rupert Murdoch and Summer Myerson and the other devil-worshipping international media conglomerates. Great answer. Uh, what is uh, what is your your favorite film of all time, if any? Uh, my favorite film of all times. It would be very hard to say, but um, uh, I think the film that knocked me out the most was a Japanese film by Kenzo Mizuguchi, Princess Yangwe Fei. It was a religious experience for me to see that movie. If you look up uh, the word sublime in the dictionary, uh, I think you'll find Princess Yangwe Fei. But I've only seen it once because I was so knocked out by it and it was such a, you know, to some extent it's like sex for the first time. So I, I don't want to see it again because I'm fearful I won't have the same uh, uh, feeling about it. But I'm very into the auteur theory of cinema, the great uh, auteur directors, Renoir and Fritz Lang and Lenny Riefenstahl, John Ford, Howard Hawks, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton. Uh, uh, you actually, uh, Dolphin Man is a big fan of Sam Fuller, of course. Uh, Sam Fuller made a trauma movie Shark uh, with uh, Burt Reynolds. Uh, uh, we didn't. We own it. We didn't uh, shoot it. But uh, Dolphin Man loves Shark very much with Burt Reynolds. Even though Shark is not a mammal, but uh, Dolphin Man is very, uh, very open-minded. He uh, he is. Uh, he believes in the Rainbow Coalition. He, you marched in Pride Day, didn't you, Dolphin Man? Yeah, it was a Pride of Wolves. So okay. Dolphin Pride. So you upload many of your films onto YouTube. 
Uh, have you ever had any issues with YouTube trying to censor your videos for objectionable content or for any other reason? Yes, YouTube uh, removed the director's cut of Terra Firma, which was shown in many festivals uh, and many uh, retrospectives and uh, got a good review in the New York Times. By community standards, Terra Firma is, uh, in the director's cut is perfect, but YouTube took it down. Now we have put up the R-rated version, um, which uh, is also very good because I, I enter the movie in a Brechtian fashion. I break the fourth wall and I come into the movie explaining why the word pussy was taken out. The word, not the, not somebody's vagina, but the word was taken out of terra firma and we show a picture of a little kitten, you know, stuff like that. Whoa! You know, that scene really is pretty graphic. At Troma, we don't like to make artistic compromises. So rather than chopping this scene up to try to get an R rating, why don't I just explain the content of the scene to you? You see, in this scene in the bathroom, I play a blind, independent film director. And Debbie Rashan plays Christine, a filthy slut actress. And she is copulating with her hung-like-a-baguette DP boyfriend, played by Darko Malesh. This is Christine, and this is Nikolai. Now, because I'm blind, I come into the bathroom, I start to urinate, I don't see them. You see? So I pee on them. Using these simple vegetables found around the house, I am going to simulate peeing on the couple. I am peeing on them. See? I am peeing on them. This is R-rated urination. This is R-rated peeing. Is there an Oscar category that does not exist that you feel should exist? I don't feel the Oscars should exist, quite frankly. It's a... Uh uh, it's just another mouthpiece, like Variety and The Hollywood Reporter. It's, it's, it's like you, when you go to school and there's a school newspaper. Uh, that's what the Oscars are just a lot of people basically high-fiving themselves and sucking the balls of Rupert Murdoch and uh, Summer Meyerson. The only one who I've ever heard thank the little people is John G. Avelson when he got the uh, uh, award for Rocky. He thanked me, and uh, I am pretty little. I'm only five foot seven. I'm pretty tall, so he must seem very short right now. What was your, your highest budget uh, film that you directed, and what was your lowest budget? The uh, biggest budget film that Michael Hers and I made was uh, Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD, about a million bucks in 1989 or 90, so that would be the equivalent of three or four million today. The, uh, the lowest budget movie that I think we've filmed really is... Uh, uh, the return to return to Newcomb High, which will probably come in at three hundred thousand, although the first half was about four hundred thousand, so the two halves together are seven hundred thousand. But the original Toxic Avenger in nineteen eighty three was four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, as as uh, Dolphin Man will tell you, which today four hundred and fifty thousand. I mean, we're making movies for about with inflation twenty percent less now then we, uh, uh, no, we're making movies today for 20% of what Toxic Avenger cost in 1983 or 82, if you include f inflation and the price of cheese. So, Poultry Geist, being my favorite of your films, seems to make fun of literally every demographic imaginable. Have you ever had any big issues with uh, any particular groups or individuals getting overly offended at one of your films? We've had very little... Uh pushback you know we're a cult uh, movie studio and our fans love us and uh, we don't get much publicity we, we have no money for advertising so you know our fans are very happy with our movies I've not the only hate mail I ever got was uh, when we uh, shot the dog and we didn't really shoot a dog uh, we, we had a scene in Toxic Avenger where the uh, blind uh, the guide dog for the blind uh, uh, Toxie's blind uh, significant other uh, got shot uh, and uh, uh, and uh, we got a little bit of hate mail for that. Nobody cared that the 13 year old boy got his head squashed by the wheel of an automobile, but what are you going to do? I work, for, I, I work for PETA also. Uh, I do it pro bono, not to be confused with uh, Cher's uh, poor skiing uh, dead husband. Uh, uh, I, I, I've done uh, some, P I did a PSA trauma style for PETA, People's Ethical Treatment of Animals. But we, we don't get much hate mail, uh, even though I'm a self-hating Jew. And uh, uh, last question to wrap this up. What is the uh, single greatest problem with the film industry today? 
I think the single greatest problem with the entire culture is that uh, the power is, is uh, consolidated in the hands of very few. And, uh, you know, Will Smith uh, uh, makes this speech about Oscar's so white. He's full of shit. He's absolutely full of shit. He knows why the uh, Oscars are so white, because he kissed ass of uh, the 90-year-old uh, white guy. In my opinion, he kissed ass, and he kisses Rupert Murdoch's ass. And, um, uh, you know, 40% of the film industry is controlled by a 90-year-old guy, Summer Meyerson, who, in my opinion, hates women, hates blacks. Uh, uh, and the other, uh, and uh, Rupert Murdoch, an 82-year-old or 88-year-old uh, uh, white fascist woman hater, racist. Who, uh, in my opinion, of course. And um, so Will Smith ought to be saying that, not just, oh, it's so terrible. There are no black people. And tough shit. Go out and say something real. You've got a forum. Nobody listens to Lloyd Kaufman, right? I've got like six fans. Uh, uh, Will Smith ought to be out there if he really is serious about it, but he's not. He's a fucking Uncle Tom. Great interview. Thanks. Uh, it was great talking to you. Uh, everybody go check out uh, Troma on YouTube. Go buy uh, one of his films. Uh, is, there, is there a recommendation for a film that uh, they should start with? Well, I think you should go to Troma Movies on YouTube, and um, they're all free, and there are a lot of movies that nobody knows about that are brilliant. There's one called Suicide, a German film. You, I guarantee you, you will never forget it, and it's wonderful. Uh, it's you know, it's way ahead of the, way before uh, found footage movies, but it's sort of a found sound foot uh, found footage movie. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, there's all this buried treasure on uh, trauma uh, uh, movies, but I think my favorite film now is uh, Return to Newcomb High, Volume One and Volume Two. And um, I'm waiting, and uh, you know, I spend a lot of time with Dolphin Man. John Brennan uh, at Troma has produced the uh, Kabuki Man Cocktail Corner series, which has just been greenlit by Michael Hurst for a second uh, season. And that's all on uh, Troma Now. Troma Now is our streaming service where all the world premiere movies land. And uh, it's all, uh, the first month is free. And then uh, I think it's four ninety nine a month or something. So I would recommend all that stuff. And thank you so much. Uh, you know, uh, it's really a privilege to uh, uh, see that you're, you know, interested because uh, not too many people are. For sure. Thank you so much. Thanks, Adam. Thank, thank, thanks, Dolphin Man. <laughs>